Hello, lovely internet strangers. I welcome you to the next episode of the Anti-Feminist Diaries, where I share stories from my life and my musings on my personal relationships as they relate to my intellectual journey, which notably includes leaving feminism. Yes, I am wearing the same outfit as my previous video because sometimes I time batch and I record multiple videos at once. Hashtag productivity hacks. But in this video, I have tea, peppermint tea to be precise, because it is my little joke about spilling the tea, as the feminists would say. Today I'm going to talk about my only remaining close female friend, who is the first friend that I told I was no longer a feminist, and she happened to be a woman, and she did not stab me. A low bar to clear, I know, but this is the world we live in. So, I pretty much left feminism right after the 2016 presidential election, and I was definitely not a feminist anymore when the Women's March was happening. So that was January of 2017, and at that time, I had not made my 8th Square Twitter account yet. I was still posting from my real-life Twitter handle, and I was posting some things about the Women's March that were not particularly supportive, and this friend shared a Medium post on Facebook that was titled, you are not equal, I'm sorry. And the message was essentially, if you're too stupid to support the Women's March, it's okay, I'll march for you. You just don't understand what historical feminism did for you. The article just had this very condescending tone. And because of that, I felt it wouldn't go well if I talked to her about my beliefs. However, a couple of months later, I was reading this book called The Feminist Utopia Project, which I still have not made a video series about, and I still want to, but God, it was so hard to read. A couple of times I've dived back into my notes from that book and they just make me want to stab myself in the face, to be quite honest. Anyway, I was reading this book on an e-reader, but when the e-reader goes to sleep, it displays the cover. And this friend saw it and asked me about it. And I knew that she was perceiving that I was a feminist and reading about feminist stuff. And that was so far from the truth. And I decided right in that moment to come clean to her. In a lot of the previous videos I've made, I've had details from chats with people or emails or my journals, but this happened during a period of my life where I was not journaling, unfortunately, and I apparently didn't really chat online to my husband about it. I just talked to him about it in person. So I decided to tell her that actually I wasn't a feminist anymore, and I was reading the book because I wanted to understand the arguments, that it was more of an academic or a scholarly interest. I don't remember exactly how I put it, but I sort of conveyed that general sentiment, and she didn't stab me. So I took that as a good sign. She mostly asked me questions about it, like, how did this happen? And so I think I told her a little bit about my husband being a libertarian and me reading about economics and going on an intellectual journey. And I probably talked a little bit about the Women's March. I know I talked a little bit about what I believed at that time. I was not really an anti-feminist then. I was just not a feminist anymore. And I know I talked to her about some of my political shifts. At that time, I was calling myself a classical liberal. And I talked about leaving the left. I told her how some of my positions had changed on things like Black Lives Matter and trans issues, among other things. And her response to my thoughts on trans issues was interesting, but I have to give you some context. So this friend is a little bit older than me. She's in her early 30s, living in New York City, same as me. She was raised by parents who are fairly conservative, like middle of the road conservative, but she would align with progressive thinking. She posts all the usual things that you would expect on Facebook about Trump and feminism. And you know, things like a cross stitch that says, my favorite season is the fall the patriarchy and all that kind of stuff. But in her personality, she is somewhat traditional. Not just traditional like monogamy, because most people want monogamy, but even traditional in terms of what kind of partner she wants. That is, she wants a man with a dominant personality who knows what he wants and will make decisions in the relationship. However, her feminism is in conflict with that. It tells her to look for a man who is more beta, to use popular terminology, but she's not attracted to those men. This is a common problem for modern women who subscribe to the feminist ideology. So being traditional, she wants children. And when I started talking about trans issues, I brought up this idea that was very popular then that if you're a straight woman who won't sleep with a trans man or a lesbian who won't sleep with a trans woman, if they don't have the genitalia that you prefer, then you're a bigot. And my friend basically said that she supports trans people, but she wants to have kids. So she needs to be with someone she can have kids with. So I was surprised to find that not only was she not stabbing me, but that we also had some minor points of overlap. And that even if she didn't agree with everything I was saying, she didn't think I was like some crazy out there 
person. And so I was definitely heartened by that because she's my closest female friend in the city and currently my really only close female friend. And I got excited that maybe I would have a woman to talk to about some of these things. And so I started sending her stuff, you know, not super aggressively, but I sent her a video from Christina Hoff Summers from her Factual Feminist series. And I sent her a link to Christina Hoff Summers being interviewed on the Rubin Report. I remember my friend watched the Factual Feminist video and then came to me and said, well, I don't like the name because it implies other feminists aren't factual. And I was like, wow, okay, find me a feminist that's factual. I mean, I didn't say that, but I wanted to. I wanted to so badly. She also watched the interview and she replied to the email where I sent it to her and said, I'm about halfway through this video. I do plan to finish it and I have mixed opinions on it. On the one hand, I like that it's two rational people having an adult discussion. No yelling, yay. And I do agree with several of the points made so far. I found it particularly interesting that Christina made the comment that 20 to 30 years ago, students with dissenting opinions would go to her event and argue and discuss with her versus now students with radically different viewpoints essentially cower in safe space rooms of the therapy dog. She then brings up a conversation that we had. She said, we've also touched on how I think the original intention behind trigger warnings and safe spaces are generally good, but that they've been taken to the extreme in a way that isn't healthy. Having trigger warnings before classes and media and such doesn't prep people to deal with real life, where you're likely to be exposed to things that are in one form or another traumatizing. I'm also including things like, oh, seeing a thing that reminds you of an ex, which makes you sad, not just literally being attacked by people. On the other hand, based on the half I've seen, I felt they were a little dismissive of things they new to be true, like if rape is underreported, in the same way that radical feminists are dismissive of the opinions of people like Ruben and Christina. All in all, a very interesting and thoughtful video, both in what they're actually saying and how it makes me reconsider things. Thanks for sharing, and then she put a smiley face. So that was like a pretty reasonable response, especially considering she's a feminist lefty, and so I was heartened by that. And I don't actually remember this, but I found a chat with my husband from April 2017, where I told him this friend and I had been having a conversation about Twitter feminist nonsense or whatever. And she basically said she believes in lowercase f feminism, to which I was silently like, we'll work on that. But she was like, but not capital F feminism. And that she had realized that to a lot of them that it was like a religion. And I said to my husband, I almost cried. I was like, yes, yes, you're coming along. And it's funny, I really don't remember that. And to be honest, I would characterize her as someone who subscribes to feminism as a religion. She's not a devout follower of the religion, but she's more like a Christmas and Easter feminist, maybe. Something else I don't really remember was that in May of 2017, we had a discussion about feminism and rape culture. And she said that her ex used to say all these things, but she couldn't hear it from him, basically, because he was a man. I was writing about this to my friend who also left the left. And I mused to him that maybe I could use identity politics to my advantage to red pill women who aren't totally gone off the deep end if I could find the bravery to do so. I'm still trying to find the bravery to do so. It's very hard to be public. So then in June of 2017, I sent her another email where I shared an interview with Cassie J. I told her Cassie J made the Red Pill documentary, which I had mentioned to her in a previous conversation. And I said Cassie J was the only person with some visibility that I had come across who had gone through a similar journey to myself and that she was a similar age as well, just a few years older. I included a second interview with Cassie J on the Rubin Report and told my friend that she should watch the documentary. And I included a video from Jordan Peterson and said, I'm not sure what you'll think of this guy because I think his style is pretty similar to my husband's and he can be pretty abrasive, but I think he speaks amazing truth and it's brilliant. And my friend who left the left and I are kind of obsessed with him. He's a University of Toronto psychology professor and therapist who got known as part of the recent free speech movement. He talks about a ton of things from personality to theology, life, the universe, and everything, but this clip had to do with an issue of concern to feminists. And it was a video about women and having children and why women drop out of high-powered careers. And he talks about his work with female lawyers. But she never replied to that email. I pinged her a few months later saying, oh, just bumping this to the top of your inbox. And she said, thanks, I missed this when it first came in. And she put a smiley face, but then she still never replied. So that kind of started a trend. At the beginning, I was excited, but it became clear over time as we did have more conversations in person that she is a very typical woman. And by that, I mean, women on average are much more agreeable than men. That is, they are on average more averse to conflict. I'm more conflict averse than the average man, but I'm less conflict averse than the average woman, but she's very conflict averse and she gets really emotional in these kinds of conversations. We did manage to have a few productive conversations. One I remember was about abortion and we didn't agree, but I think she respected what I 
had to say. But I think the conversation got her back up against the wall a little bit. At the end of the day, it was a good conversation, but just over time, as she continued to get her back up against the wall and have these reactions, I didn't see much point in having these conversations with her because they just weren't fun for her and they weren't fun for me either. And we just have so many underlying assumptions that aren't shared between the two of us about how the world works, which made having those conversations not really enjoyable or productive, which was unfortunate. But I have continued to engage with her about feminism with a more subtle approach via how I talk to her about her dating life. And I will discuss that topic in my next video. So stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or email me. I appreciate hearing from you. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.